It was 1990. I was in my office, shared by the graduate teaching assistants at Temple University's psychology and education program. I was having a conversation with one of my office mates about our pets. In the middle of the conversation, I heard myself say, in the 10 years I've had my cats, Rascal, Ollie, and Muffy, there hasn't been a single day they haven't made me laugh. When I heard myself say that, I stopped in my own tracks. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. I hadn't realized up until then how much these furry little creatures had added to my life. It was at that moment that I embarked on a new phase in my career as an anthrozoologist studying the relationships between humans and animals. Science is now showing evidence. In fact, we now have 40 years of research documenting the many ways that animals of all kinds contribute to our physical, emotional, and social health and well-being. And this is well documented by the media. These are two covers from Time Magazine just from the past two months, talking about all the different ways that animals are good for our health. In fact, the one on the right I just picked up in Raylers a couple of days ago. In fact, one particular study showed that having a dog in the room was more effective for lowering blood pressure than an ACE inhibitor, which is a common drug used to control blood pressure. What about cats? Well, you can't play Frisbee with Fluffy, but Fluffy has a secret weapon. <laughs> so we know that pets are good for us. Not just pets, but animals of all kinds. It's not just Fluffy and Fido, but Freddy too. Freddy could be a donkey, a goat, a chicken, any animal you choose. They do so much for us every day. They greet us when we come home. They sleep with us. They comfort us. They make us laugh. They do so much for us without asking for anything. We owe it to them to take the best care and love them as much as we can.